Well, greetings. I want to talk with you today about parables and most if not all of what I'm going to tell you can be found in a book called How to Read the Bible for All It's Worth by Douglas Stewart and Gordon Fee. Very helpful book, talks about genre uh, of the Bible. And so one of the genres is that of parables. And no doubt you've already read some parables in the Gospel of Matthew and you'll be reading and in Mark and you'll be reading more parables this week in Luke. And your discussion or one of your discussion boards is going to be to take a parable and present it to your group. And then you'll respond to the presentations of others. So let me talk with you a little bit about parables. And as we talk about parables, one of the first things we want to do is to identify the audience. So as Jesus tells parables, we wanna pay attention, who is he telling this parable or these parables to? Sometimes it's the scribes and the Pharisees. Sometimes it's the disciples. Sometimes there's a mixed setting as to who is there. But we always want to pay attention to who the audience is because typically Jesus teaches to his audience. And then we also want to ask the question, kind of what's the punch of the parable? So as we imagine that audience and their relationship to Jesus, how is Jesus kind of punching them uh, with the parable? Uh, maybe another way to think about it in terms of this word punch is that parables are in some ways like a joke. And whenever you tell a joke, there are points of references that the people listening begin to kind of catch. They kind of lean into it. And then comes a punchline. And the punchline just kind of totally knocks you off balance. And if you get it, it's kind of funny that you got knocked off balance. If you don't get it and you're kind of scratching your head what was funny about that and it has to be explained to you, well, then you understand the joke, but it kind of loses its punch. Okay, and so the parables are very much like jokes in terms of Jesus sets people up, they're leaning particular ways, and then all of a sudden the, the punch comes and typically they get it. I know the disciples are kind of slow to get it at times, but almost always when Jesus tells a parable against the Pharisees or the scribes or the Sadducees, like they get the punch. They know that Jesus is telling the parable against them. Okay, the parables kind of function to do three things. So first is their illustrations of the kingdom of God. And so oftentimes a parable will begin, uh, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God is like. Okay, and maybe one of the more popular ones, it's in all, all three of the Gospels, um, the sower goes out to sow and sows the seed. And the seed, some of the seed lands on the hard path, some of the seed lands in shallow soil that's rocky, some of the seed lands in soil where there's weeds and thistles that are growing up with it, and some of the seed falls on the good soil where it produces a huge crop. Okay, the hard path, it gets eaten by the birds, the shallow soil that's rocky, it sprouts up, but lack of nourishment, and it dies quickly. The thorns and the thistles, well, the seed springs up, but it kind of gets choked out, never produces fruit. But the good soil, that produces a great harvest. Okay, so that's one of the parables that Jesus tells the kingdom of heaven is like. So it illustrates the kingdom of God that the seed is the word, the word goes forth, people hear the word, they respond in all different kinds of ways, okay? So it's an illustration, okay? But even more than that, it reveals our relationship to the kingdom, okay? So when you hear that parable, one of the things that happens is that I begin, you begin to say, okay, well, what kind of soil am I? You know, am I, am I the soil, the hard path, and the word has never taken root? Probably not, or you wouldn't be thinking about the parable. Okay, but maybe I'm the shallow soil to where I never get so much depth in my life. Or maybe I am the soil with the, the weeds and the thorns and the thistles growing up. And so that even though, you know, the seed of the gospel is growing in me, I got all these other things growing in. And so my life isn't very fruitful. Okay, so, so it illustrates the kingdom of God, but more than illustrating it reveals our relationship to the kingdom of God. Okay, now you got to get this. Number three, most important, it evokes a response to the kingdom of God. Okay, and so Jesus doesn't tell the parables just to illustrate. He doesn't tell the parable just to help me to see my relationship with the kingdom. 
your soil number two, too bad for you. No, he tells the parables to evoke a response and typically the response is to repent, that I need to change my life in order to receive the kingdom, in order to receive the rule of Jesus and to be right with God. And so in terms of the parable of the soils, Maybe I need to grow deeper. Maybe I need to get some thorns, some weeds, some thistles out of my life that is choking out, you know, choking out fruitfulness from my life. Okay, so the whole point of the parable is not simply to illustrate, well, this is what it's like. It's not simply to say, well, this is where you're at in relation to the kingdom. No, it's all about evoking a response so that I will all of a sudden have this kind of punch, if you will, the wow, I'm out of right relationship with God's kingdom. I need to change in order to be in, in order to be received, in order to receive Christ's rule. The punchline exposes me so that I will respond appropriately. I will repent. And maybe that would even be a better word than simply to reveal our relation to the kingdom. Maybe it is to expose our relationship to the kingdom, where we think we're right and the parable comes and all of a sudden we see that we're out of step. And so now it's evoking a response that I need to repent in order to enter into the kingdom. So you wanna pay attention to the audience. You wanna pay attention to, okay, how is this parable kind of going to punch them? How is it going to explode on them? And then we start to think about, okay, how does it explode? on me, what's being revealed or exposed about my relationship to the kingdom, and what kind of response do I need to make, what do I need to repent of, uh, what change needs to come about in my life in order to be in right relationship to the coming king and his kingdom. All right, so your assignment is going to be to select a parable and then to run through this, what does it illustrate, what does it reveal or expose about yourself, or if you're not comfortable being that uh, personal with your group yet, what is exposed in terms of the audience that it is addressed to within the gospel, and what kind of response is Jesus seeking to evoke from those who are listening. All right, hope you enjoy that assignment, and we'll close this one off.